what's going on everyone uh before i get into this video i just want to let you know that i opened up this channel here on discord uh essentially it's just going to be something so people can either submit tracks for review or uh, just share whatever you're into uh, i'll be sharing a lot of my own personal stuff here uh, i should probably actually add all the channels here um all right there we go so added some channels we have bulletin board for basic stuff we have this is just where i'm going to put any stuff that i'm releasing or stuff that i'm putting out um this is going to be for everyone a uh, general chat uh, triple crabby sub memes I, I it's just did anyone order a triple this is all just general stuff memes general chat music and art and, and this is the feedback request if you're looking for feedback specifically from me feel free to tag me otherwise i'll try to take a look at everything um I may not get to everything just to, like no one in here, but I'm gonna throw open. I'm gonna throw an invitation out here, so uh, feel free to join. Feel free to submit anything you'd like to to potentially have reviewed, and uh, it may make it in one of these videos here. I've got a lot of different musical servers here. Most of them have stuff like this for promo. Sometimes losers like me post stuff there. There's a lot, but but as we can see as we go through here, there's not. Okay, I like this one's actually pretty active. Uh, if we go to some of the others, so like if we go to Wave Dash here, oh, uh, some other losers still post there. So, uh, some uh, other more respectable artists post here as well. Uh, I try to do what I can and reply uh, in between making stuff. I'm <laughs> Hop Hopkins. Uh, so here's what I'm really going to do. Let's see how many servers we have. Got one, two, 21. All right, so I'm just going to click this seven times here because that was a random number I chose. So that leaves us with 19 as our starting point. We're going to choose server number 19. Give it up for server 19, 20, 19. Bill Eagle. Ooh, Mr. Bill's community. Mr. Bill talent here. So uh, let's, oh, yes. Did I just see Cox? Or was that Rax? That may have been Rax, not Cox. Whoops. I'm pretty sure. And then I thought I saw phalluses, but producer and fallacies. Okay, I, I need to get my mind out of the couch. Yes, I did see Cox. Never mind. I'm not crazy. <laughs> Diablo yeah, that just happened. Uh, de definitely not alone there. Yep, everyone is on the Diablo 4 train today. All right, all right. I like where this guy. Is. Uh, I think this is gonna be the first one we check out. Vault is here. Just want to see if he has anything else. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna download this and we're gonna pop it in. Okay. So just looking at the waveform alone, I'm seeing a lot of repetition already, but that's okay. It, it could be worth it. It just depends on how they're using it. So well, let's see what we got here. <laughs> I can say one thing right off the bat, and I'll demonstrate it here with an analyzer. Let's uh, go ahead and actually add the analyzer. Uh, what's the freaking crap? What am I trying to use? Uh, what do we use? Uh, literally, I know what... Pfft, you, no, we use U-Lane Meter too. Uh, see, this is normally when you're a bit further in the track's production, so I'm not going to be focusing on that. The one that I do want to focus on... God damn it. I, I can't believe I forgot Span. That's the name. I'm a little upset about that. Uh, also, if you guys want to change the color of Span up here, right over here. So now that we've got this, let's go ahead and pull this. Let's try that one more time. So it does just slap you in the face right at the beginning. Like, I can tell we're at an intro here. And th this kind of has, like, a nice, uh, I'm going to call it a choo-choo train feel. That may be a ridiculous phrasing to use, but. It, it almost feels like you have those train whistles in there layered in as a nice house element. Very unique sound to use. Very intrigued by that. So, what 
I, I want to see where that hat is, or the, the little clap is that's going on, because it, it, it feels like it needs a little more room to breathe. I could be wrong. You have good separation going on right here. Uh, your bass frequency is really pronounced, especially while you're at this drop. I think most of my qualm here is with the buildup and everything else uh, preceding that. Like right at the, uh, this track definitely feels like it's going in the right direction. Um, but we just want to talk about how quickly that slaps you in the face and the volume that it does. You got to remember that people are opening up this track and uh, the, you want to give them at least something in, in the way of like even just a little reverse effect if we do something like this. And so the other thing that that's missing right there, now that we're not being slapped in the face with just this right off the bat, let's take a look at this this kick here what's happening here like no transient at all it's like i can almost hear it there a little bit uh so actually let's do something okay so we've separated the song into stems now let's go ahead what i want to do is add some kicks taking a look at the this is going to be the drum track here in pink and if we just isolate it and look at the kicks that's going on oh wait uh this is for the drop your drop has really good kicks uh so does the build up it's really right here like if we just isolate this and listen to it or just that there's just nothing really carrying and like I know it's there. Seems to be a desire to want to hear this bass, this part here, the the latter part. It seems like you're wanting this part, the the middle part here, that bass to come through. But it the way that the the listener of the song is going to perceive a kick is by having a transient, even if it's just a little tiny. Like you don't need like a dubstep. -y. You don't need something like that. You could survive something like this. Let's actually use that just to see. Let's add it in. And already it just sounds like it, the, the kick that you're wanting to come through your mix is already still more present. And you're still kind of maintaining that minimalism uh, that, see, that seems to be desired with this track here. Uh, this does have a little bit too much bass on it, though, so we can just take it on a parametric EQ. It, that's also something about your kick, is you have a lot of sub-bass down here, but you don't have a lot of bass or lower mid frequencies like this 75 to 200 area. So I wouldn't like do too much of it. it so adding the sample by itself is going to add some of this range, but you need to tamper that down a little bit so that there's room for everything else still. This range. And you still have the the base presence of that other one, but it, it almost, it, now it feels like there's a kick to follow along to.
the other thing that I'm seeing here is we want to add some reverse samples. Stuff like this. Even if it's little tiny ones, just like this, they add, they make such a huge difference. Well, let's listen to this. And also, it's really good to cut these off for the most part. Maybe bring down the volume just a little bit so it's tucked away in the back there, but you still get the feeling of it. Versus without it. I hear something there. It's just really, since it's so side chained in there, the crash is really just not present. Sorry, it's in here. Yeah, I would go into your mix and maybe shorten the side chain just a little bit because you don't need to side chain your cymbal. You need to remove the bass frequencies out of it. You would need to side chain it if you had uh, like a transient that you were getting out of the way, because that's what side chaining does: is it makes room out of, out of here, so that you can have room for other things. But this is the part that you're taking room out of everything for, so there's nothing for the user to enjoy frequency-wise. There, I, I know that there's a, a desire to make emphasis here, but you have to put emphasis on something, and there's nothing here to put emphasis on, filling in any of this area, but. Uh, it, it's not as dramatic. Like if you're going for like a something that like Matt Zoe did, this would be the more of a way to do it, where you have like uh, unless you were trying to do something more like this, where you can actually chop everything by beats, and then. Even with this, too, you can do that. Like that, that's a bit more of like a dramatic cutoff type of, um, emphasis feel that you can generate with side chaining and, and still have like presence and everything uh because that that's just the one thing i'm noticing with this whip the the work or wip the most is that there's not much presence in the track going on uh but i, I think if you have again so if we bring back a crash that doesn't get side chained or doesn't get side chained as heavy i'm looking for one of the little That should work. Maybe turn it down a little bit if it works with. And now it's nice, this nice guided feel throughout the intro. The, the listener's ears are not hit with a wall of blah, it's blah, and their, their ears are tuned to it. Versus someone clicks on your file. Yeah, you just uh, some people hear the term uh, slap them in the face with a beat, but most people do not want to be slapped in the face with music or with loud audio. It's just it only works in context of like a drop or like perceived loudness, where in comparison to everything else that your ears have been adjusting to is loud. Literally slapping someone in the face with loud volume is never desirable. <laughs> But everything else here, it's, it's really good. I really like what's going on here. My only, the only thing I would offer here is just cut off a tiny bit, like half of a beat, or half of a, like a 16th note. Just so you have just enough space here to really emphasize how hard this is going to hit this kick here. 
versus that. There's just a little bit more room to really make the kick pop. Well, let's hear what's happening. Yeah, just a little bit louder. Like, it's so barely noticeable for that one in particular, but it's taking care for stuff like that and thinking in that type of leading up with the reverse and then hitting, uh, but then also giving it, like, its own particular silent space for, like, the next big thing to come in and have room. Uh, you don't want to just go from seamless to seamless. You want to have these types of little pauses for, for like, more dramatic, like, imposes. Um, that's why we don't do that here because we want it to be a nice, smooth transition from the beginning. But we could easily just do something similar. And actually, we do kind of have it right. There. It, each one has their own effect, for sure. Like... But really, I think this is... Uh, and that's also why we have that down a little bit there. Actually, I believe I put this down so that this has some room to shine. And, and so, like, here's, here's the thing about side-chaining your crash. This is where the crash is transient is. If you're going to be repeating the crash then you just want to get rid of that transient there. You want to make room out of the crash so that the transient of the kick and the transient of the crash are not clashing. So when you make that room there, that's all you need is the room for the kick's transient. You don't need to sidechain the rest of it because there's no crash transient here where there's another kick transient or down here or down here. It's just right here for the crash, but the kick has one. So to make sure they don't argue... You only have to take out this one, and you don't need to take out all frequencies, too. Because that... You only need that. Now, you do get more dramatic effects. But going too far with that... Is just too much. It's not consistent, and you want to hear a crash. Uh, that's pretty much all I got. Uh, I, th this track definitely has good potential. Uh, also, just write a second verse and a drop and an outro, like, you know. Uh, lastly, I would just say spend more time finding ways to add stuff like this, either little sound effects, uh, just whatever you can do to make it a little bit more unique. But, yeah, good work here. We do love a good remix. All right. Uh, let's go find another one. Like, Eliminates is popping off a little bit today. Uh, whew, okay. Um, we got one. Yeah, I think we're going to do this one. And we're going to see what we get. You know what? The, it reminds me of a Zed song off of uh, the Spectrum album. I will love, can't save us. I will never let you go. Ba -da 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 -da. Yeah, I like that. I love that chord progression. It's such a good feel. Very nice piano work here. It just needs a little stereo space. A little bit more reverb, like maybe a parallel channel for reverb there. So like if we, uh, well, I was saying, I'm not sure if that came through, but a parallel channel for reverb. On, on, on I wanted to do it on just piano, but we have a little bit more than that in this track here. You basically just take, and you can do this with your piano track or multiple tracks at the same time. Let's say we route that to eight there. And then we can take that, and in addition to having it routed to the master here, we can also route it to, like, track 10 as well. So now it's doubled, and you could take that doubled track 
and put a reverb on it, like fruity reverb. You could really use any reverb, obviously, but then you want to make sure your wet is turned all the way up. So if we take away what the normal one is doing. Oh, wait, I did not do that right. And now if we take away, if we take away the normal one. Uh, there's actually still some dry here. That's what this knob is. So now if we take away the dry and just listen to the wet. But now if we slowly add in the original, you'll see how much of a difference it makes and how much more control over the reverb you have. And if you ever lose like what percentage this is at, if you don't see it up here, it's just hard, too hard to find, right click and hit reset. And that'll just bring you right back to 80, which is the default number. But then here, you can literally just move this fader up and down to control how much reverb you want on that one element. And I actually think I want a bigger reverb. That's part of my thing here. See, that's a lot bigger now. And another thing you can do to emphasize this, uh, these knobs down here the, that go from blue to, or actually it depends on which color mode you're in, but normally it's purple and blue, uh, cyan. Uh, cyan normally means that it's wider. Uh, left means that it's wider every time. Uh, to the right means that it's more mono. So uh, it'll be a, um, um, either mono or stereo voicing. So if we have like mono reverb, it gives a very specific effect, but with something beautiful like this, you want it to be luscious and, and wide. So if you take the reverb and put it all the way at wideness, it's almost like the reverb is becomes the walls of this particular sound that you have going on here. And then if you can, you can either choose to make this just a little bit wider, just enough to hear that like that one note do 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 get like a little bit more bright because of it. it it just has a little bit more like space within it so yeah let's keep going That is another thing I'm hearing here. Your hi hats are really loud. Uh, just compare it over everything. You uh, something that someone told me a long time ago. They were pretty uh, seasoned uh, EDM mixing engineer. Uh, they were from who are they from? They were from the Defier community. If you've heard of them, um, they said you shouldn't ever be able to have your hi hats above your other elements in your tracks. Uh, there's exceptions to that, where if it's like they're the only thing, or if you're if you want the hi hats to be the focus, but your hi hats here. They are taking that center stage, and they shouldn't be. You're that this synth here. Shush, you shush. This synth, that synth should be taking center stage there. So the way that we can just fix this is literally just... Also, uh, another thing that needs to be addressed with this uh, particular, these particular uh, hi-hats, uh, is there is just a little too much, and here's how I can identify it, is I hear a <sighs> in it, and here's what I mean. <sighs> it's about right there. It's just a little... tiny bit because this area is really hard for human ears this like 16 15 and 17 is really hard for the human ear to hear so that it's a really good spot to add a lot of brightness if there's not a lot there already and these are very clean hi-hats so you have some freedom to do that they're not like a loop or anything they don't feel like There, 
that like just this little tiny bump here is uh, now matching that one. Now this little bit matches that over there. Right? Actually, um, on top of that, with the, the other track that we put into the reverb bus, we could also add this too, just because the vocal is really right there. Uh, if it were my song, I would do these independently. I wouldn't put them on the same mixer track like I'm doing. But you can hear now, uh, since it's the, if we switch it from 7 to where it's on nothing, and then put it back on 8. sudden your track is like swirling a little bit more there, there's some dynamic depth to it that wasn't there before and these types of things can really guide you to finish the track in the first place uh, i'm going to end with one more note of feedback on that if you're uh if you're mixing your song and you have something like a limiter on uh you may want to try throwing on something like like a multi-band compressor or uh, if you have fl studios maximus is a great option um, doing something like the clear master uh, can be a little loud you can already hear my voice went up with that uh, but we can just take like if you notice you have to listen and figure out if it's your lows your medium or your highs that are really becoming a problem there so let's listen feels like we've got a lot of mid presence so we can take that down a bit and i we lost some of the highs so we can bring those back too Let's just play with the lows to see where they're at. All right, just right there where it barely is touching. And uh, there is a certain element of that where you got to be conscientious of which notes are going to be louder. Um, there's more advanced techniques to make sure that you're doing that, but that's definitely more of a mastering thing, not so much of a mixing and instrumentation thing. So don't worry about that too much. Uh, otherwise, having something like this may... It, it adds what people call glue to your mix, and it makes it a lot more present. It helps you get an idea of what elements are tucked away in between the samples of your tracks. So, like, the little, like, tiny hi-hats or just little glazes of drum hits, like uh, little clicks from pianos that were buried away underneath bass and mid. Just so much can be brought out with this type. Of, it's essentially a form of compression, uh, but it's just a lot more friendly for your master. Uh, when you export the track, you may want to go back through it and set these one more time or just turn it off. Uh, it just depends on what you're going for in a final mix or, or if you're even doing it. But yeah, otherwise, uh, this is definitely a very solid beginning to a song. I like where you're going with it. I would also say you just want to have some more dramatic pauses. like Something to really... Uh, I'm going to turn off the reverb bus here really quick. Like here, if you... Right before the kick comes in... Cut these off, and then fade them out a little bit more. You want you want to have this pure silence. Uh, the The trick here is to use silence as an instrument. That's the phrase. And then also it on your way out too. With kicks, you don't want to do that as much. But with things that just are like have small elements, you want them to fade in. Something like this, you do want it to hit you. So there's kind of like some distortion. I'm not sure if you can hear that. On the, only on the kick. It's just a little bit of mud in there is what we're going to call that. That's it right there. That little sound right there. So if we cut that just enough.
your kick is all of a sudden a lot more present and it's coming through your mix. You can do that, repeat this here uh, with uh, this low mid area. You could kind of hear where it's talking in my voice. You want to take that and cut that out and boom, all of a sudden. Uh, keep in mind that this is just for your kicks. I'm having to do this to the entire track because my stems are not working properly for the demo that you sent, so. Yeah, it, it just seems like you need to spend more time cleaning up the individual elements with EQs. And then when you do that last trick that I told you with Maximus here, it's going to make everything pop so much more. So we, if we turn that on. And now like what I was saying earlier about how when we added this reverb track here, every, everything is so much more swirly. Um, it's all in there. You have the right idea. You just, I think you just need to spend some more time cleaning it up. This is a really good idea. Don't give up on it. Toes, mama, give a fuck,